Hey guys, I'm Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. The week after the events of D-Day, on June the 13th, 1944, Nazi Germany began to launch a new terrifying weapon at London from the northern coast of France. The V-1 flying bomb, also known as the Buzz Bomb or Doodlebug, was the first of the retaliation weapons, or Vergeltungswaffen, the second of these being the V-2 rocket. The V-1 was a pilotless monoplane fitted with a pulse jet motor, a one-ton explosive warhead, and a simple guidance system called a gyroscope. The distinctive droning roar of these bombs would fill the air as these weapons were launched via ramps. The psychological effect that the bomb had upon one's mind was immense. It wasn't only the rumbling noise of its pulse jet motor that made it so frightening, but when the engine cut out due to fuel starvation, it would be followed by a horrible silence before the warhead exploded upon hitting the ground. Dozens of these warheads would fall in the first week, with the Royal Air Force scrambling to stop them. In today's video, I discuss some of the drastic measures that RAF pilots took in order to prevent these weapons from reaching England. British Supermarine Spitfire, a graceful and deadly fighter. In the fight against the V-1 flying bomb, it presented some of the most phenomenal moments of this aircraft's combat history. In order to take on this warhead, the Supermarine Company would have to make improvements upon the constantly upgraded aircraft by replacing the Rolls-Royce Merlin with the more powerful Rolls-Royce Griffin. Compared to the earlier Mark II Spitfires, for example, with Merlin 3 engines, which generated roughly 1,440 horsepower at max speed, the new Griffin 2 engine was able to produce up to 1,730 horsepower, and in the later Griffin 61, 2,030 horsepower. The V-1 flying bomb reached 640 kilometers per hour. The Spitfires, fitted with the more powerful Griffin engine, could reach a staggering 661 kilometers per hour. The extra power from this new engine enabled this awesome aircraft to catch up with the flying bomb. Tackling these V-1s required serious determination and nerves of steel, as demonstrated by Australian flying officer Kenneth Roy Collier of No. 91 Spitfire Squadron. It's Friday, June 23rd, 1944. Collier, flying Spitfire NM-698, spots a V-1 and gives pursuit. He fires a short burst, which has no effect. Again, he shoots at the speeding warhead, but runs out of ammunition. Knowing that the V-1 is guided by a gyroscope, Collier edges his wing under the tip of the flying bomb and flips it over. Still, the V-1 kept going on its course upside down. Collier repeats the wing-dipping maneuver, and this time, the 2,000-pound warhead went into a spin and crashed to the ground over East Grinstead at 8.40 p.m. Although the deadly weapon reached down, it exploded in an open field and caused no casualties. Other pilots adopted Collier's dangerous wing-dipping maneuver Although over 10,000 V-1s were launched at England, roughly 1,000 of these deadly warheads are either shot or tipped out of the sky. By September 1944, the V-1 threat to England was temporarily halted when the launch sites on the French coast were overrun by the advancing Allied forces. The last V-1 assault on British soil ended on the 29th of March 1945, when a V-1 struck Datchworth in Hertfordshire. Finally, I'll finish off this video with some photographs during my visit to the Australian Imperial War Museum in Canberra last year. Here is a V-1 flying bomb on display next to a Supermarine Spitfire Mark I. Next week, in my war videos, 
the mighty Boeing B-29 Superfortress. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching, I really enjoy making these videos. And don't forget to give this a like and to subscribe for more content. You can also help support my channel by subscribing to my Patreon or donating to my PayPal. The links are in the description box down below. Finally, to my loyal subscribers, your contribution and ongoing support for this channel has been so helpful, it really means the world to me. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you next time.